Hello beloved brethren. In the last video we kind of got cut short and we were reading out of Psalm 64 and we read um, 1 John 4 18 and we're going to read 2 Timothy 1 7 also. 2 Timothy 1 7 and it says for God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then we're going to get into another thing I wanted to talk about. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I hope that this is, we are continuing for the faith and um, on this channel and comforting one another, fellowshipping in the scriptures. Jesus said to um, eat your bread at home and then come together with a word. Hallelujah. So, in 1 Corinthians 3.16, it says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Beloved there is a lot of information about the Antichrist online and about this third temple they're going to build. But beloved, I've done videos on this and the Holy Spirit has shown me by his word that we are the temple of God where Satan wants to dwell in. I don't think he cares less about a building made with stone in the Middle East. I really believe the temple that he is after is the body of Christ where Jews and Gentiles, Israelites and those grafted in are believing and filled with the Holy Spirit. And so, which is the temple, which is the spirit of God. And so God, Jesus had said some things about, you know, if any man, uh, if anyone offends one of these little ones that believe in me, now, you could be a babe in Christ and be in your, you know, over 50, you know, um, you're a babe in Christ. You're, you know, going to need to drink the milk of the word. And so that's in, I think, P First Peter. So what we have in the world is the devil masquerading as an angel of light. And we are light in the world. Jesus said, you're a city on a hill, a city that can not be moved. You are light in the world. And Jesus said, shine your light for men to see you to glor so that they may glorify your Father which is in heaven. So when God speaks of, through the apostles, that the Antichrist will sit in the, in the temple of God, I believe he's referring to the body of Christ. And we see this in a couple different places happening to saints who in the book of Acts had, you know, Satan had um, had done something to their heart. He had, he had entered into their heart. And that's where our Lord and Savior is supposed to dwell, where he is supposed to take up the land of our heart, the earth of our heart the field of our heart where he should be dwelling and nobody else, not money, love of money, not love of anything else. And so the thoughts and the intents of the heart also involves thinking. So the thoughts and the intents of the heart, the word of God pierces through bone and marrow, even to the discerning of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And so when we look at at the thought, thoughts and the intents of the heart, that's where Satan is looking to get in. And I believe um, he also is looking to get into the living stones. You know, he's clean, clinging on the body of Christ as spots in our feast of love, it says in the epistle of Jude. So he comes on and encompasses the camp of the saints, as it says in Revelation the, this Gog and Magog, the devil does, that deceive the nations. They cling on. So these are spots which are black smoke spirits, unbelieving 
Antichrist. Anyone that doesn't believe that Jesus is the Christ is Antichrist. So these spots, because they're not lights in their world, they're not born again of the Holy Spirit. As we just read in 1 Corinthians 3, that you're the temple of God, I'm the temple of God, where the Spirit of God dwells. And so say we are complete in Christ. And it's Christ in us, the hope of glory that sits, that's in us, walking in our heart, it says in the scriptures. You could look that up. Very encouraging to know that that's where he walks, is in our heart. That no one can get to that heart unless you allow them to get to your heart and your mind. And sure, I know, beloved, I know he's tried to get my heart and mind. He's tried to, and that's why God said to, you know, watch the, in the through one of the apostles, he said, watch your heart, you know, um, because God judges the heart. So Satan wants you to give your heart away. Okay. Now, I don't believe that a the devil can possess a believer in their new creation, in the new creature created in Christ, because he says he holds that temple in heaven. He holds that body and he brings it with him. He says he will bring the incorruptible and immortal with him. In this body, we, we, we get sick. In that new creation, that new vessel that God has, stored up in heaven for us, it cannot get sick. Okay, so, and that's in Revelation. You could read about, you know, and even um, Jesus said, you know, you'll be like the angels, you know, they don't die. They are everlasting spirits. And so we will get that new creation, that new, even the though you could say old things have passed away, all things have become new. Um, and we'll read a few more scriptures here, but I just want to encourage you to know that where the Satan wants to sit, the Antichrist is in us to try to create doubt and unbelief. So what is an Antichrist? He that d denies that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. So what are they doing? They're bringing in this Chrislam or is Islam beliefs into the church that, you know, um, different things to deny that Jesus is the Christ and bringing in other messiahs or themselves as Christ, you know, and Jesus himself said, you know, when they say here is Christ, there is Christ. He said, believe it not, go not after them. You know, he says that in Matthew, I think 24. And so, you know, um, he says, don't go after them. For as the sun sh or as the lightning shineth from the east even unto the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. So when He comes, you'll know it. You know, <laughs> His light will shine. You'll know. Every one of us are going to see Him, the Son of Man. And so, um, anyways, so if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. You know, God also said that our faith is holy. So most holy faith, he says. So keep the faith, beloved brethren, because that's that's really important for a believer. I guess I, I was supposed to read to 23. Oh, yes, let's read to 23. Here we go. Um, Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world. Notice this world. Okay, it's a very important part. Because the, the, I'm going to just add to, you know, just speak on this. Um, the scriptures say that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God, you know. Um, and so if they think that themselves are wise and they, you know, they may not have any fear of God because they may think they have not enough knowledge or wisdom of themselves or even wisdom of the scriptures to think, oh, I'm my own God, you know, or I'm going to use the scriptures to make myself God and I'm going to declare things. They're going to come to pass. You know, <laughs> I can't say, let there be light. And all of a sudden light shines right here be just because I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. You know, I think that is, that is, that is not, <laughs> that's not what God had taught us as believers. So in, it goes on to say, let him become a fool that he may be wise. So what, why a fool in verse eight, 18 of first Corinthians three, 
Well, it's very clear in the scriptures. Um, the apostles said, you know, the foolishness of foolishness of preaching the word, the, the gospel of Christ, the, the cross, that the preaching of the cross was foolishness. So he's saying, become a fool, you know, <laughs> you know, trust in the cross of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So he says that he may be wise. So, yeah, fool to this world, but wise because we're in the kingdom of God. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God, for it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. <laughs> wow. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours, whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or things present or things to come. All are yours. Remember, we're co-heirs with Christ, the scriptures say. And ye are Christ's. And Christ is God's. Christ belongs to God and we are in him. Hallelujah. This is so encouraging, isn't it? So let a man so account of his, uh, us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So a couple things here. So we don't glory in men. The thoughts of man are vain. What did Jesus say to Peter Whenever he said, you know, oh, Jesus, don't let it be. Whenever Jesus was telling them that, you know, he must die or something like that. And Jesus said, Satan, get behind me. For you come from, from man's perspective and not God's. Wow. That is, that is strong against the wisdom of man, against our own thoughts. Okay, our thoughts. It says in the scriptures that our heart can deceive us and our thoughts can deceive us. We can have vain imaginations. So it's important that we live by the word of God, by the spirit, by faith. We live by faith. Um, and knowing that, you know, when, when Jesus sent the prophets words from the spirit, they said, he said, son of man, speak, you know, say this. And write, uh, the Son of Man, write this in a book. You know, write this down. I'm speaking to you. The Holy Spirit speaking to you. Write it down, <laughs> you know. And so um, that's something that we should look at the, the prophets and the men of old. It was always what God had said that made them wise. It wasn't themselves. It was their faith in his wisdom and God's wisdom. Because his wisdom was greater. Now, if you're living in, in righteousness because you know him like Abel, you know, he knew by the spirit what God wanted. And so he provided in an action of giving him what he wanted because he knew what God wanted in the spirit. So that's how his offering was righteous because he had faith. Super, super important to live by faith. All right, the just shall live by faith. And so um, let's go to the next one. Acts. Promise I'm getting somewhere with all this. Acts 5, 3 through 5. And it says, But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? While, whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power, in his power? He's talking about his own power to, to, to give the, the price of the land. Why hast thou conceived, conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. So God talks in the scriptures about Sin conceived in the heart, okay? That's where sin is conceived, is in the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's where it, why God says, you know, watch your heart. So it was conceived in the serpent seed, um, the serpent that sows the seed, the double tongue talking serpent, sows something and it conceives like a, 
like a, a woman is conceives from the seed of the man a child. I'm I you know to have a baby. So Satan's seed can can get into a heart and 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 hatch an egg from the poison of the serpent. A, an egg can be hatched a poison of bitterness. And so even though we talk about all of these truths that God has given us in the scriptures about the wicked, we don't want to be bitter towards them, towards our fellow man, because that would be something that Satan can conceive in us. Yes, it's awful what they did. Yes, it's angry. It makes us angry, the evil things they've done. And we're vexed with the filthy conversation that's in the world. Like Noah was vexed with the filthy conversation of them during his time. And so he prepared an ark for his family. So in the same way, you know, he wasn't bitter against them. He told them, get on the ark, but they wouldn't listen to him. They mocked him. And so in the same way, you know, um, for us, we see these people and their hearts are just getting wicked. It says that the people get wicked because of the coldness of their hearts. And obviously, in this case, Satan had filled his heart where the Holy Ghost was supposed to be and lied in the light of the Holy Ghost. Now, the Holy Ghost was still there, but Satan filled the heart, you know, because the seed of the word remains. And so they die because they are they had the Holy Spirit. So, you know, the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament could strike someone down and kill them instantly. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, you don't want to lie to the Holy Ghost. <laughs> they can strike us down instantly. So, but the conceiving in the heart, you know, Saul was killing Christians and that the scales were over his eyes and his ears of a serpent. The serpent was covering his eyes and his ears so he couldn't hear the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And so you see that that's the, the prince of the power of the air, the, the spirit that works in the children of disobedience, the spirit that Satan, Satan's spirit filled an apostle, I mean, a, a believer, a holy saint and his wife. And so I believe that's where Satan wants to dwell in and in the third temple, since we are the temple of the living God and the spirit of God dwells in us, is in us. All right. So the scriptures say not to quench the Holy Spirit. Lots of things about the Holy Spirit. So go ahead and read that on your own. Um, now let's turn to Hebrews 4.12. This is important because a lot of people have, you know, made doctrines and I believe a lot of the doctrines that are out there about the end times are meant in order to, for them to get a kingdom on earth because their hearts are not right with God and they love money more than God. And so they want treasures of earth and money. And there's some very, very wicked people who listen to Satan and who bow to him. And since he is a spirit, he can see where all the treasures are. He can, he's, he's been here from the beginning because Cain was of that wicked one, remember? So Cain slew his brother. He murdered his brother because he was of that wicked one. So um, sin owned him. And that, that thought conceived in the heart, even though God warned him not to let that happen, it conceived that bitterness grew a root. And Satan, then he killed his brother Abel. So just like Jesus, you know, the priests had him killed, not so that we hate those priests, but they did because, you know, of envy and um, also because the priest, the high priest at that time said that one must die for the people of Israel, for the nation, he said. Okay, so the high priest knew that Jesus needed to be the Lamb of God. So in Hebrews 4, verse 12, it says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. 
very important. Okay, Matthew, Matthew. And we see that the, when you look at the, the parable of the sower of the seed, which one do we have first? What does that say? Uh, 10, Matthew 10, verse 34. Hopefully I have enough time to do this. Verse 34. Um, and they shall mock him and shall, uh, is that the one? 10, verse 34, yeah. And scourge him and shall spit on him and shall kill him. And the third day he shall rise again. I don't, oh, I'm in Mark, sorry. <laughs> Wrong one. Sorry, God, that you had to go through that. Lord Jesus. 2,000 years ago, over 2,000 years ago now, since he died on the cross on the tree. My mom, every time we talk about it, she cries. She says, why did he have to go through that? Or he, she knows, but you know, she always cries. She's really precious. My mom, I love her. So it says, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So that sword is to discern the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Cutting through bone and marrow. That is a very important message, beloved. And then he said, and from the and in verse 12 of chapter 11, it says, And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. But we see that that Satan in that one chapter in the book of Acts, um, Satan had, you know, you know, deceived his heart, and that that's just awful to hear, to think about, you know, that his heart was given to Satan rather than to God, you know, and that's where he gets into the heart.